still feeling like I'm a whole person without needing to win is a, is a really important human experience, especially because you've had an unusual amount of winning. By the end of this year, that's going to be largely balanced out because you, you won't feel you need to win in order to feel satisfied with life. I mean, to, to, to properly meditate, it should probably be like doing this one. Om. Say Om. <laughs> Imagine if your life was a movie, you were directing it. What would you do? After all this time, three decades of professional surfing, I raised that footage from yesterday. <laughs> walking through all these different walks of life, I almost want people to experience this story that I've had. Watch this left right here. Tomorrow, it literally could have the waves of the year. I think in the 70s and the 80s, Jeffries may have been considered the best wave in the world, but surfing's changed a lot. There's a different type of surfing we're doing now. There's a different type of waves that we're looking for. So I don't think there's a best wave in the world, but it's the most fun you can have in the water. Three, 400 yard long rides with three different barrels on them. And you wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Go, 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 go. Wow. <laughs> that was sick. Kind of work. Maybe. Oh, you can't really see it. Fuck. I'll fix it later. Oh, oh, you should have kept his line, eh? Yeah. Get up. Oh, he almost got around it. The one in the front's kind of rolling, and that one's kind of barrel Like The second ones are always the better. I'll think so. Hollow ones. Sets come in, you just want to keep paddling. I wanted to come in like 20 times. I already surfed like three and a half hours or something. Three, three and a half hours. Probably walked the beach like eight times. 
I mean, each wave's like minimum 150 yards, but some are like 400 yards. We'll be lucky the Connors is half the size, I think. Doesn't look like there's much swell. My confidence is lacking a little just because those scores aren't just coming. You know, I need to just stick with the base foundation of my surfing. It's not rocket science, it's somewhere like J Bay. You know, you, th you do big carves and you throw a lot of spray and you get a few barrels and you're gonna get big scores. Just pick the right waves. Full moon rising, by the way. Look at this. My feelings are a little bit lukewarm on the Olympics now, to be perfectly honest. Pretty much nailed it. As of June 9th, you had to be in the top three from your country. Connor passed me by, I think, a round. That pushed me off of the eligibility for that event. Now, John got hurt, and I got emails and phone calls or text messages that I'm uh, eligible now to go back in. But I feel like a replacement, you know? I feel like everyone's talking about trying to win the 12th world title and, you know, make the Olympics and try to win a gold medal. There's obviously a decision that needs to be made by me as to whether I'm gonna surf the ISA games and try to make the team that way or not. To start this off with, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm just feeling a little bit heady. I don't know, when you, when you have a few down days, <clears throat> and there hadn't been waves, it's also easy to just get in your head and start thinking as yeah. opposed to like just flowing and surfing, you know? I think it's important to remember that when you surf at your best, it's not because you planned what to do, but it's when you're there to have fun and you're not worried about whether you win or lose. The Bali was the first time I felt that again in, in quite a while. And it was really obvious based on your performance. If I win and don't perform well or have fun or enjoy it, it's kind of like a loss. You're blessed with having a career that is a sport, that is fun, that you would choose to do even if you didn't do it for a career. And so it should always be fun or you've completely missed the point. You're used to being the best. You don't factor your age in because you feel young, but it is a factor. You, know, you, say, you like, said that to me in Bali and it really stuck with me. You have an expectation of being amongst the best in the world and also people have that expectation of you. It's a false pressure, but it feels like a real pressure because the truth is... You've had so much success that if you didn't have one more bit of success, you've still had more than anyone else anyway. It's good. He, he just gets me not thinking. I'm a real heady person, and he just shows me that, yeah, that can be good if you figure something out the right way, but it can also just, like, get you stuck in, like, a negative place. Even up to, like, the minute I paddle out, we've been on the phone sometimes working through things, making sure it's clear, because he's like, look, even if it takes you up to the last second, before like something clicks, commit to that, you know, do that for yourself. Mm. What do you think? Did it work? It works, huh? I think I, I might, I'll, I'll, I'll probably jump on the Tekoro first, because I, that's the last word I rode a couple days ago. And I can put more, I can definitely put more power and more push into that board. And sometimes that pressure of the heat and the competition gets me to a place where I start to focus, and then I start to feel. My goals have been so lofty my whole life that I put a lot of pressure and then I get stuck in my head. And it's funny after all this time to even be worried about it. So his idea is like just to have fun. Play whatever is in your mind and in the way, and then be able to have fun at what you're doing. And if you're having fun, it really truly just doesn't matter if you win or lose. If you're having fun, you enjoyed it, it was worth the time spent. But you know, the truth is I have a lot of days and time on the road where I'm not enjoying it. It's not the contest or the tour, it's just my own life. My own personal issues and family stuff and relationship stuff and what you think about career, what your goals are, like all those things build up and add up and then sometimes you just go surfing and forget about all that and then you don't handle it. And surfing becomes like that drug that just like covers it up for a little while. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. The next team coming up, we've got in the red vest and currently ranked number seven in the world, Kenny Slater. A perfect day here at Jeffreys Bay. 
And a big matchup for Kelly Slater. Wants to maintain his place at the top end of the Jeep leaderboard up against Kai Belly. We're in a beautiful part of the world. I love this place. I have good friends here. The wave's fun. But I got a heat with Kayo. You know, he and I were battling for the wild card last year. He put me out of the contest in Western Australia. You come all the way to South Africa, and there's a chance you, you've come all this way and you lose early, and you spend all that time of your life and that money to get here. If the focus for me is wrong, and it's just that, like, it's not good unless I win, it's just a weird pressure. And they've met in the past, so obviously uh, there, there is a, a little more to this heat. Kelly loves to hold a head-to-head -head edge over his rivals. That's what he'll be going after here. 47 years of age, Kelly Slater. Kelly, this wall looking solid down the line. Front side carve, tail release. One of his signature moves. Gets the rebound just to set up to get through to this inside section. Nice big flow. Whoa! Great starter from Kelly Slater. Let's see what those judges have to say. What a flexible. I'm stoked, bro. What? Whoa. I thought 7 5, but it's no. <laughs> 90 seconds to go. Kaiwa Belly needing a seven point ride. Vertical snap, real clean up off the lip. Hard off the bottom, clean, carve. Setting up a finishing move, stays on his feet and lets out a roar. Go on, get out the back, biggest hit of the day. Well, Kelly will take this one before he runs out of time. The four-time J-Bay champ gets started with a big top turn. Sits on the lip line to float the transition. Hard off the bottom, quick hack off the lip. Right into a beautiful finishing move. Kelly stays on his feet for another brilliant performance here at Jeffries Bay to move on to the round of 16. I met Tom, who runs Surfers Not Street Children, in 2017. And then this year, beforehand, he told me he's bring a bunch of the girls that have gone through the system with them at, in Durban. I was really looking forward to that. That was a, definitely a highlight of my trip. Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you? Hi. How you doing? Hi. Hi, guys. How you doing? The girls have had a great time, though. Yeah? I mean, you guys got a lot of waves? Yes. Yeah. Hey, you had a question. Uh, how old are you when you won your first World Championship? World Championships? Yeah, I was 20. Yo! Yeah. 27 years ago. How did it feel? I mean, like, 20 years old. I don't know. It's a little bit of a vague memory. I think Ross Clark Jones beat Sonny Garcia, and Sonny was the only person who could catch me. And Sonny's a good friend of mine. But So we're standing in the hotel, and we could just hear, like, oh, who won that heat? And I remember Tom Carroll looked, turned to me. He goes, mate, you're the world champion. Yeah. And it was so weird. It was just me and Tom, and there was, not, there was no hoopla. There was no, I wasn't on the beach with a bunch of people. It's a really wild feeling. And then I, I flew home to Florida. And I was with my brother, we went down to the beach, we're in the water, and he goes, you little shit, you're a fucking, you're the fucking world champion. <laughs> he goes, and he like hits me in the arm or something. And I was like, cool, all right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it was, and, and the way he was saying it was like, can you believe that? I was wondering, like, what advice would you give like someone trying to get into the CT? Like yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Just keep shredding. You know, I think you gotta just like lean on your strengths, but you gotta really work on your weaknesses. You know, work on all those skills to, to bring all those other ones up to where your best are. Doing the things everyone else isn't doing, my diet, my fitness. You know, there's all these different variables that are like, they're part of the recipe. You know, I, I think you gotta just believe you can do it. And like, just fall in love with surfing, you know? You know, if you got yourself in that position, you would have a lot of support from people. So, you know, I know that You'd have a lot of support from people like myself if you make it there, and <clears throat> it'd be really exciting for us to see someone like yourself get there. It'd be really great. Oh, that's yeah. an incentive, eh? Yeah. Wow. We've got to catch a bus in a minute. So who's, who wants a picture with Kevin? Okay. Cool. Everyone. Wow, <laughs> yeah. You guys do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone say girl surf too.
I don't know what happened, but something went out of my rib. Like a super sharp pain, like a knife in my side right now. I, for like the last at least hour, I've been just horizontal. I haven't been able to stand upright. Yeah, I don't know. If I feel like this tomorrow, I can't surf, so we'll see. I gotta just get some ice on it and get some anti-inflammatory going. It's just been like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna lay off for a minute. Three days ago, the last time we had heats, that day I did something to my back. I don't know if it was messing around with my buddy doing a little jujitsu or a wipeout in my heat. I went to hit the last section and I was kind of in two minds. Like I was thinking, let's do a carve and finish out before this because you don't know how it's going to jump. I went to hit it and I thought I had a good line, but my momentum was going a little bit down the line. And I kind of went over the handlebars and, and ate it. Could have been on that one. There's no easy heats on tour, but surfing against Italo with a bad back is probably not a great idea. <laughs> you know, it's one of the hardest heats in the world as it is. Oh, fuck, that thing hurts. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm obviously very concerned that I won't be able to compete at least in any serious capacity tomorrow. So. Even more mobilization going through the joints and also going through the muscles. And uh, yeah, you get an even better response. Hopefully I can surf tomorrow. Hopefully it's just six foot barrels and I can just pull in the barrel and maybe not have to turn. Too much? It's okay. You sure? Yeah, I thought you were actually poking it with your hand. Yes, <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. Is it fine? You sure? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Last night I went to bed just really hoping I could surf today. Then I got excited and I kind of thought, well, if I can surf, it's all upside because the way I felt yesterday, I didn't think I'd be able to surf. So I feel really relaxed right now, actually. Moving into the last heat of the round of 16 to establish our last quarter finalist here. Kelly Slater taking on Italo Ferreira and Italo moving to the inside, picking off this one nice and early. Up into the pocket, nice swoop off the top on the backhand. Slater in a, a great position on the Jeep leaderboard coming into this event. Loading up again, big hawk. That was just vintage Kelly Slater, I love that too. The rhythm in the opening stages here going the way of the Brazilian. As we see Italo down the line picking this one off. Here's a nice lift, he hits it beautifully. Cleaner, into the float. Back to back to back, one after another. Seamlessly connecting. And Italo just finding some release on that final section. Slater up at the moment. Needs a 6.97 prior to Italo's last ride. Kelly pumping down the line. Gets a nice snap out of the top. Drives around cleanly. This one here is just a speed line, just building into this turn. Floats, all right, this next turn's the big gap. Look, Kelly Slater, the subtle adjustments of the body, but into a beautiful last wrap. It's gonna take something exceptional, Slater knows that. He gets a, another win, his third head to head victory over Slater. He's moving through to that last quarter final spot. Charlie, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, pretty good. The hangover of a contest. So in terms of the Olympics, how do you feel about that at the moment? Like we did talk about that like a month ago, but what's the, like? Um, yeah, so it's, it's evolved a little bit. Um, you and I spoke and, you, what did you say? You, you mentioned something about just like letting that go or like, what was it you said about the Olympics? Because, it, and, and the reason was it was like, it was causing me, like it was just stressing me out too. Yeah, okay, so at the time what I said to you, because you were stressed about it and you were stressed about winning, and what I said to you is you've got 11 world titles, how many would you give me to feel good? Yeah. 
how much how much of the, the the trophies would you give to just enjoy your life and be, be happy yeah and you 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 took a few seconds to answer to me <laughs> yeah and i'm like what are they worth like how many trophies do you need if they're getting in, if it's a, if it's actually a stressful experience for you Tahiti has just always been one of those places that it's at the top of a surfer's list of place to go. Yeah, I've been back to Tahiti in three years. Nice to be back here. Beautiful. I need to win a contest in 2022. It'd be 30 year span of winning contests. I don't think that's going to happen. But you never know. It's a Kelly slide. Oh my goodness gracious. There is a reality that you could die out there on a big day, for sure. You can see just how vicious Chopo is as that wave tubes on down the line. 